Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Second Star to the Left. I'm Billy. This is my mom, Michelle. Hi! <laughs> We're going to talk about board game reviews, ramblings, and a few wrong turns along the scenic route. I looked at the camera for like a third of that. Nailed it! Nice! <laughs> month we are going to share the top five games billy wishes we could play more i'm gay <laughs> now to be fair these aren't necessarily billy's favorite games although some of them are some of them are and i'm not mean i'm not keeping billy from playing any of these games well i'm not gonna agree to that one. mostly but these are games that billy wishes we could get to the table more often exactly all right so billy picked five well six you get five. Let's start with number five. Uh, number five is one that, yeah, well, I mean, you like all of these games, really. Do I like all of them? I don't know. I don't know the list, so what's number five? Number five is one that we've both enjoyed a lot, and one that usually sees the table more often in, like, the autumn. It's Broom Service. Aw, I'm a brave little witch. <laughs> <laughs> Cowardly witch. Broom Service is an adorable little pick-up and deliver game where you are a tiny little witch delivering potions all around. I actually saw pictures of this game on Instagram. How much did I torture you before we found this a game? A lot. We, we spent a long time looking for it before we found it. Yeah, we, we saw pictures and I by the map and the tiny little witch meeples, I knew that I wanted it before I even knew what it was. <laughs> but then it turns out it's a really fun game. It is. So I do like that you can force someone to use a card from their hand by, you know, declaring that you're a brave witch or not. One side of the board has more challenging situations because you have like the lightning. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically you're creating potions and delivering them around the map and trying to keep everybody else from doing the same. It's bright and it's colorful. And while we play it during spooky season because it's cute little witch meeples, it's not really a spooky game. No, it's not. Because there's like herb witches mm -hmm. and mountain witches and forest witches, I think. I have to, I, we haven't played it in a while. That's why it's on the list. That's why it's on the That's list. It's we on haven't the played list. it in too long. But we should play it because we, really we shouldn't should. save it till spooky season. It gets buried in all the other games. What is number four? Number four is sort of an amalgam. That's not how you make a list. Is sort of more of like a genre of game rather than anything specific. This is cheating. I feel cheating coming on. It's not cheating. And Did you you've, done, you've said button shy before, so. That's not cheating. That's, That's not even a genre of game. That's just a size of game. <laughs> Don't come after the button shy. Okay, okay. All right, so. I mean, I love button shy, you know, but. It's... What genre of games are you cheating and using as number four? Skirmish games. Uh, tabletop miniature warfare stuff, like not quite big armies like Warhammer or something. No, that, I'm, I'm not no, going to play I like, that. There's a lot of little indie games that I like that I've been pretty much collecting over the years and I've never had a chance to play. Uh, most of them are miniature agnostic, so you could use like any minis that you have. Okay, so is it still the kind of game though where I have to like measure four inches and then I'm going to shoot you? Pew, 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 well, pew. I mean, kind of, but it's not like you have to break out a measuring tape and it's usually with the indie games not that specific so i can just move as far as i want to there are games where you can move as far as you want as long as it's in a straight line the one i was thinking of in particular though was space weirdos like gonzo yes and the more recently released uh sword weirdos the fantasy version of it where all measurement is done with these five inch sticks that you have uh and so all moving all shooting everything is just you have one it's like sort of like x-wing where you have several sizes of movement stick but there's just one you use for everything Okay, well, maybe. And it would speed things up considerably. So the reason that Billy can't get this one to the table is because I'm not a big fan of the skirmish games, which is, you know, my fault. We should try some, because I, I do like one. I think you are, but you don't know it yet, because you haven't really played many, and the few that you have played usually dressed up a little, board gamey clothes. Yes, put them in a board gamey outfit. But you do really enjoy the ones that you have played. Maybe. Uh, a few others that I would like to mention as part of my number yeah, four. It's just supposed to be one game. Shush. In addition to Space Weirdos and Sword Weirdos, uh, I am also very interested in playing the newly released Majestic 13 from Snarling Badger Studios, which is, it's like X-Files meets XCOM. It's very like, you're 
secret agents fighting in alien invasion. That could be fun. And that one specifically is a solo and co-op game. The aliens are always controlled by the uh, AI. You know, you roll to see what they do. Well, that could be fun. Right? But you still cheated. Number four was not a game. Okay. Can you pick a game for number three? Yes, I can. Are you sure it'll be one game? Shush. The number three is a very recent favorite, but one that I enjoyed a lot, and then we haven't really gotten to the table a lot since we got it. It is Guild of Merchant Explorers. Ah, oh, yeah, traveling by map. Yeah. We had a lot of fun with it when we first got it, but ever since then we've been just kind of playing new games every time we get new games and we get new games a lot. I so know, we're trying to well we we aren't getting to go back. We aren't sometimes. getting new games a lot right now. We're being oh, really yeah, yeah, good. It has been a while. But, but there's still such a backlog. Huge stack. There's a mountain of games behind me. But yeah, so Guild of Merchant Explorers, you're building trade routes and exploring and meeting and, new places and, and and exploring. Building. You're, you're a guild of you're, merchants you're who are exploring. And then selling to the places you explore. <laughs> who would have guessed? There's a few really interesting bits about this. And one is the way that you move, which is five different types of movement or exploration that you can do. And you always know what those five types are going to be. Mm -hmm. But you don't know the order that they're going to be in each round. So you're, you're trying to plan your best route, but you're not sure if you're going to get to move, you know, through the ocean or through the I think it's like the desert or if you're it's always the ocean you're thinking of the no you get you're on the it. you're on land at some points of it you're on the shore are you I thought you, you were thinking of the roll and write one no uh-uh you're, you're on sure? the sh yes okay and also it's like it's been so long since we got to play it I don't and also remember. there's like runes for you to explore like there's sunken ships and you can get treasure yeah but that's all in the water yeah but then there's land because you build oh those... there is you build it on the land okay 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 what I didn't know the first time I played it, and I told this story before, was if you don't build kind of the little outposts, the trading places, uh, at the end of every round, all of your cubes that you've put on the map to help mm -hmm. you travel get wiped out. Only the outposts stay on the map. Right. And so then for the, for the next round, you can start from any outpost, unless you haven't built any, and then you're just very sad explorer who had to go home <laughs> and not go anywhere. This one's really fun. I'm not sure why it doesn't get to the table more often than it does. Because you're a butthead. Oh, this is the reason why Billy's games aren't getting to the table. I think it should get to the table more often because yes. the setup is actually pretty minimal. It really is. It's not hard to set up and it's really quick to play. It's only like, a, I'd say, 20 minute game. I'd maybe. say let's play it tonight, but it's a million degrees up here. It is very warm up here and it is very late. And as soon as we're done filming, I would like to go downstairs and drink some very cold water. What's number two on your list? Uh, number two is probably not a surprise to some people. Oceans. Because it's tied for my favorite game of all time with Evolution. You know... Uh, it's been forever since we played it. Do you know what's funny, though? I feel like if we were to sit down and play Evolution, that I could play it without really too much of a rules refresh. But every time we play Oceans, I feel like I have to learn it again. Yeah, I think. there's a few like what Cambrian explosion. Is mm -hmm. that the... Yeah, and then because you, then you go into the deep and you have all the you have and, the scary it's, fishes. It's really I we should play it more until we have it memorized. We really it's should. not a fault of the game. No, and we have the really nice little acrylic fish. So, Oceans is the the sequel to Evolution, and in Evolution more of a prequel, really, if okay, you think about it. In order of the game's release, Ocean <laughs> is a sequel. It's the second one to release. And you are creating species of fish that will then feed off other species of fish if you've done it correctly. Well, not just fish. Well, also, like mammals and cephalopods. And... Are there mammals in oceans? I think there's a card mm. that looks like a dolphin. Swimmy mammals. Well, yeah. Okay, but you know what it is? It's stuff that lives in the ocean. When I said mammals, did you think, like, monkeys? Oh, no. Dogs, cats? No. <laughs> I didn't think they weren't in the game. Whales, dolphins. Ugh. In oceans, <laughs> you are creating species of ocean-dwelling creatures. Yay! And you're giving them traits and abilities that will help them survive in the ocean. And then hopefully you are able to feed those species before they die out. Because if you don't feed them, they don't live. And give them enough traits and abilities that will keep them from being food for bigger fish. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful game, and it's a lot of fun to create these underwater creatures. The card art goes from, like, 
very tranquil to very scary when you get into the deep and there's all those very scary fish that would be in the deepest, darkest parts of the ocean. That's Big why teeth. And that's why you don't swim in the ocean. Fits. Well, you don't swim in the deep. Don't swim and in they the... generally can't make it to the surface. I don't swim in the shallow part of the ocean either. Okay. Since that's your favorite game, basically, <laughs> and it's at number two, what is your number one game? It's one that we have not gotten to the table in maybe four or five years at least. Oof. And one that we bought a huge expansion second edition for and then never set up. Uh-uh. It is X-Wing. So, okay. This is a skirmish game. It is a skirmish game and you love it. You've played this one. I do love it's board X-Wing. board gamey and it's self-contained so it's easier. And we have the big Starfield mat to do, play it do. on. I can tell you right now the reason that we don't play X-Wing. Why? Because it is a royal pain in the butt to set up because you have all the sets, yeah. which means you get to Actually, you have to like pick your teams and then balance the numbers uh, and then find the little disky uh, things. And hey, then, excuse me? That can all be done through the official hat. Uh, but you don't do it, and you haven't upgraded your pieces yet, so I can't find you. You're supposed to help me upgrade the pieces. It's a massive task. We have a million ships. And that's why it's never hitting the table. We gotta swap out all the little stack cards. X-Wing is a skirmish game based on Star Wars, if you didn't get that from X-Wing. Pew, pew. And, you're, and you're fighting with miniatures of all the ships from the different factions in has, Star Wars. It has this really fun, like, pre-programmed movement. Yeah, you have to select all the movement for each one of your ships in advance of your turn. Mm-hmm. And you don't know what the other person's going to do. So maybe I have this big plan to, like, move ahead four and then curve left three and then right. shoot but billy just takes off the other way and then i'm just in a corner You're going shooting pew, at nothing. Pew, 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 it's pew. so fun the movement is it's it's such a good feeling game to play and i don't know why we have been putting off upgrading the second edition for so I long i know why because it's a pain it is to put the upgrade the upgrade is but set up for the game itself is actually not that painful for each ship you have to find its little card and its little dial and all the information about it and then you have to balance your teams because maybe i want uh-huh. a bunch of tiny little speedy ones and i know you said the app does it but if the app tells me what's on my team i still have to dig through that entire giant thing of ships that you have okay but we're gonna we're gonna sort things out when we're making uh, the upgrade to second edition well we're gonna make billy make an entire little video about upgrading the x-wing showing ships. off our ship collection too we do have a lot of ships those are all the games that billy wants to get to the table and we don't right pretty That's, much it's all of them well i mean there's a few more but i had to make a, a list at a manageable length <laughs> so we're gonna try and get some of those to the table we'll keep you posted on how that goes Are there games that you love that you just can't seem to get played? Let us know down in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, help me convince her to upgrade X-Wing. Or if you'd like to keep watching until we get one right, then please like, subscribe, and share. (laughs) As always, open tables, open minds, and play yourselves. Bye. I waved too early the first time. (laughs) You're you. You do you, boo. <laughs> You're not supposed to look disgusted at me. It's not disgusted, it's disappointing. Oh, okay. And we're gonna talk about board game reviews, board game board games, <laughs> board gamey things. No That's not us. No. What's our thing? <laughs> And a few wrong turns. And a few wrong turns along the scenic route. <laughs> you know, I nailed it. One more time. I nailed it. <laughs>